Hi guys and welcome to A Dark Soul, an empath's guide to your dark feelings. On this podcast we talk about everything emotional and how we can help our dogs live a happy, joyful and amazing life at our side. Today our topic will be something that has been asked for a lot and that's separation anxiety. So why do dogs get separation anxiety, how we can help them, and what's this all about? Enjoy. Okay, so especially since the pandemic, I get separation anxiety cases really a lot more. and. That's partly because a lot more dogs are in our household. It's just gotten a lot more. And therefore, of course, we see more problems as well. Also, we have very questionable puppy production (laughs) areas. I don't really want to call them breeders because they are not. They are just... Well, let's just say that a lot of the puppies adopted during the pandemic didn't have a very good first start in their lives. And then we have one additional thing, and that is that a lot of dogs didn't need to be alone during the pandemic because a lot of people worked from home. And that's awesome. But if we are now trying to get back to our usual routines or if we just want to run errands or things like that, this can get to a point where it's an issue. And that's why we see so many more separation anxiety cases. To start off, dogs having separation anxiety is normal. I know it's tough news, but the thing is, our dogs are very social animals, so they want to be with us, and they are completely dependent on us. They have been bred over generations to be absolutely dependent on us. And yes, there are wild dogs who are independent, but those are almost a different species. Our Family pets really cannot do anything without us. They cannot go to the toilet. They cannot meet friends. They cannot even go to the food cabinet and get their own food. They can't get water without us. And yes, dogs, if they have to, can get very creative in these areas. But if there isn't a lot of neglect in their lives, they don't have to. And that's what we want, isn't it? We want dogs who are dependent on us. We want dogs who do things with us, who kiss the ground we walk on, (laughs) and who are with us and want to be with us 24-7. And we have managed to create those animals, and now A side effect of that is that they are getting separation anxiety when we don't do anything against that. And those of you who have puppies at home, you are in a very, very awesome position. You can teach your dog this from the beginning in a very, very sustainable and loving way so that separation will not become an issue. With older dogs, we can do exactly the same, but we do have experiences already. So if the dog has already experienced separation anxiety, we start with a more difficult state. So what do I mean with a sustainable and loving way? There are quick fix recommendations like put your dog in a crate or use anti-bark collars, stuff like that. 
and that is the opposite. <laughs> there are no quick fixes for separation anxiety because even if we achieve to stop the behavior, barking, growling, eating through doors, destroying stuff, peeing, pooping, whatever, we do not change the dog's emotional state. And the base emotion behind separation anxiety is panic. And that's why we really need to change our dog's emotional state. We need to teach our dogs that they are capable of surviving on their own until we are back and we will definitely be back. Those are the things we have to teach our dogs and this cannot work with putting them in a crate or using anti-bark collars or things like that. We can use a crate for training but the crate has to be open. It has to be kept open at all times. There is actually only one situation where I would close a crate and that is for a car ride. Other than that, it's no way of keeping a dog for hours. It's just too small. It's in my country and I know other countries as well. It's forbidden by law to put a dog in a closed crate for hours. It's not allowed. And that's because this is not something that is in any way beneficial for the dog or for his well-being or for his emotional state or anything like that. So if we want to use a crate for the dog to have a spot where he can relax, it has to stay open. What we can do is if our dogs like to snuggle up in a cozy little cave-like thing, we can put blankets over it, always with watching out for air circulation. So if we put a very heavy blanket over it and it's summertime, it might just get stuffy in there and that's not comfortable anymore. But whenever we see the dog no longer liking the crate and again, we keep it open so we see if the dog just doesn't want to get in anymore, we can just check for air circulation or if there is anything wrong with it. And some dogs don't even like creep like things. Some dogs like open spaces where they have a better view. And sometimes it's a good idea to leave the dog with the view because it's something that is soothing for him or because it's something that can be an alternative behavior to anything we don't want. For some dogs, they get very anxious when they have view, so that's where I would restrict it a little bit. And we can use different things for that. Like if we have a dog who is constantly watching out a window and not resting at all, this is concerning. Then we could use a window film, anything that blocks the view outside. Or we can just push the furniture away from the window so that the dog can't get on furniture to look outside. It always depends on the individual dog. What every dog needs though is a relaxation zone. And not only for separation anxiety, dogs but for every dog. Every dog needs a space in the house where he can feel safe, where nobody bothers him, where he knows he can go to relax and just recharge his batteries and process the things he has experienced with enough sleep and rest. And to be honest, this is what separation time should be all about, isn't it? We should see this as a time for our dogs to just relax and recharge. 
and sometimes we get such a guilty conscience because we're leaving our dogs alone that we are projecting something on them that isn't really there. So if a dog has learned to be comfortable while he's alone, he will use it as sleep and rest time. And this is something that is very needed and very healthy for the dog. So not every separation time is bad for the dog. That's a very, very important thing we have to learn. And again, we can use a lot of different things to connect the alone time and the relaxation zone with relaxation. And all of that is in the Home Alone course from Brave Dog Training Online, if you haven't seen it already. And the most important thing is that we really take the time to teach the dog the connection. It's not something that takes a lot of effort to train or anything. It's just a little time we have to spend there and get our dogs accustomed to connecting this new area with relaxation. Again, this is very individual for every dog. It depends on what the dog likes. And of course, it's not the whole story. We also have to teach the dog that he is fine when we walk away, that he is fine when we are behind barriers. This is again something that comes with separation anxiety sometimes, not every dog, but a lot of dogs who suffer from separation anxiety also have barrier frustration. But it can also come alone. So we can also have a dog who only experiences barrier frustration but no separation anxiety and the other way around. And barrier frustration just means that whenever the dog is in some way hindered to get to his caregiver, he gets frustrated. That's what we see, for example, if we close the door and the dog gets really frustrated and tries to eat through the door. It doesn't have to be separation anxiety, it can just be barrier frustration. But if it's only barrier frustration, then what we might see is that the dog can calm down when we are really gone, but not if he hears us in another room. Okay? It's a little tricky to find out what it is. And if we are training for separation anxiety, we are training for barrier frustration as well. If we are training in a sustainable way, because we are including barriers in some way at some point, okay? But this only can happen when we already have a relaxation zone. And what I see very often, and sometimes it works, but sometimes it makes things a lot worse, is that people do not connect a safe zone. They start training with leaving. And again, if we don't have separation anxiety, this might work. And they start with five or 10 minutes. Again, I would never suggest it. Because if we have separation anxiety or a sensitive dog, this is way too long. And we are missing the absolute basics. And that's a relaxation zone and teaching the dog that he can do things with himself <laughs> that are actually fun and actually just spend some time there. So when we are getting to actually leaving, and this is again the last step in the whole training process, everything else before that is a lot more important. But when we get to leaving, it's a second, not minutes. This is very, very important. And 
we have to disconnect all the steps we take with leaving. So, for example, our dogs don't start with separation anxiety when we're out the door. Our dogs are very perceptive. They watch us and they know the signs. So, some dogs start when we are putting on our clothes. Some dogs start when we are going to the bathroom to look in a mirror one last time or check our makeup or whatever. Some dogs might start when we put a jacket on. Some dogs might start when we are collecting items we need when we are going outside. So car keys, purse, wallet, things like that. And some dogs even might start when they see us behaving in a specific way. So we are behaving differently when we have leaving in mind than we are when we are just moving to the kitchen. And some dogs are so worried that they are following us around all the time because they are so afraid that we could somehow just disappear. And for those dogs, they really need to learn that they can stay somewhere, be fine when we are walking away. So these are all different exercises, but also kind of connected in each other. They are supporting each other. And this is why it's not just about putting the dog somewhere and making it impossible to destroy things. So to sum it up, we need a relaxation zone. This is what you can do immediately after listening to this episode. Get a relaxation zone for your dog installed. However, this might look like for your dog, what he likes, watch out for doorways or areas where a lot of action is going on. So. For example, I wouldn't put a relaxation zone in the middle of a room or in a walkthrough closet or whatever. And then it's very individuals for every dog. If we have that, we need to teach the dog that he can actually do things with himself. And he's fine if we walk away from him within sight. Then we teach the dog that there are times when we are not available for him. And only after that, we teach the dog that we are leaving and he's fine. All of this is happening with a ritual. So the dog really knows what's going on. We're not sneaking out. This is also a very important part. And something else that can help with separation anxiety, not solely that, but it can just make the process easier, is building up the dog's confidence. Because the more insecure a dog is, the easier he gets separation anxiety or is affected by separation anxiety in a very severe way. So building up confidence always helps not only for separation anxiety, but for everything in the dog's life. So this is, again, something I highly recommend. And now I would love for you to click the subscribe button or the plus in Apple Podcasts if you liked this episode and you don't want to miss anything anymore. And if you have somebody in your environment where you say, this person really would benefit from learning about separation anxiety, feel free to share the episode and together we can help even more people and their dogs live just a little more happy and joyful together. I wish you an amazing time training with your dog and introducing a separation anxiety protocol, a relaxation zone, and get rid of this problem once and for all. 
Until next time. Bye.